Rita Peterson with Everything Homemade. And this is the very first video of a series of videos on how to make cheese. And I figured if you're going to learn, if I'm going to teach you how to make cheese, then we need to teach you how to get the milk, especially if you are wanting to start with raw milk. Now I'm going to be milking my um, Dexter cow. And so I'm going to start right from the basic of what do I do to get ready to milking to tell you a little bit about the stanchion we built. So this is going to be an in-depth series. So if you want to pause me right now and go grab some tea or something to drink and maybe a piece of paper, take some notes, do that now because you're going to hear me talking throughout this. You are also going to, I'm going to explain in detail what's going on and I'm going to make this very informative. So this is not going to be a five minute video and I really strive to make sure my videos are informative in every way possible. So Today we are going to go out and milk. You notice that we've got a winter scenery here. This is not summer milking. This is winter. It is minus 10 right now. Um, the sun's out so it is, it is warmer. But I'm milking without a barn. So this is no fancy, fancy setup. This is typical homesteading. Um, we don't have anything fancy right now. In the future I wish we will have a barn. But this will show you practical way of milking, some tips that I've learned through a very cold winter. And uh, so where do we begin? One, you have to have something to bring your cow in, okay? If you are fortunate that your cow just walks in without any food bribe, great. Mine doesn't. It needs oats. And I always mix in my oats sulfur. Now this is an afternoon milking because when I milk it is completely dark and I milk with a LED light, but it's not great for filming. So I didn't feed her the sulfur in the morning, which I usually do. I'm going to feed her in the afternoon just to show you. When I'm milking, I also have a double glove. And so this is just a heavier um, fleece mitts. These gloves are a bit wrecked. I'll have to have new ones next year. But these ones are actually um, tighter gloves that I use that are just honestly um, phone friendly. Because I do have a business, I usually have my phone with me and I'm answering. But what I found is because of the material they're used, if I put on hobbles or anything in that they are very, very good. Fleece just doesn't work as great. I just love these. They, I have destroyed them. It is March, so I'm not too worried. I have about one more month. I'll throw them away and buy another $10 pair for the beginning of winter. But that's, I always have a double glove and you'll see exactly why. So sulfur looks like this. And I don't store this outside, but in the little area I do is very low lighting. So I just brought this outside so you can see it. It is very yellow. Um, a word of caution, if you smoke, this is highly flammable. Do not have your cigarette lit while you're doing this. Um, don't work by a fire, don't work by a barbecue, nothing in open flame. Sulfur um, is needed for every part of the body. Your milk cow needs it. Most, most supplements are low in sulfur. It also helps prevent worms and kills lice and everything else. So I just take sulfur and I have three buckets and you'll see why this is our main feeding bucket so I'm gonna put about a tablespoon in there this is Stella's she's um, 13 months old she gets some but not near as much as, as mama here then I have my cup here for crushing the clumps just like that this stuff here really prevents lice um, it's really good for their health. So I add a little sulfur to every milking. Um, after a week or two, I miss a couple milkings just to make sure she's not getting too much. So this is how I set it up. I put these in. My oats are close to the stanchion. So I'm just going to put this away. I'll get my son to put that away for me. Then I have my milk pail. This is stainless steel. They're expensive pails, but well worthwhile when you clean it. It's clean. It doesn't harbor any bacteria. 
it's clean inside. This here's my transfer pail. So when I'm done milking, I'll transfer in here so when I walk back to the house, it doesn't slosh, the dogs don't lick it, and it stays clean. So this is my setup. So in the morning, I take these two along with my lantern, and I go for a little walk. So let's go for a little walk and uh, see where my my cow that's named Cinnamon, she's black, but I love Cinnamon, so I nicknamed her Cinnamon, and my calf is. Okay, so here we are. There's Cinnamon, the one with the tag in her ear, and Stella. Is halter broke and I've worked with her since she's been three months. She's the offspring of the calf of cinnamon from last year. So I take my milking stuff and I get this ready. My oats are here. These here are really, really nice because they are waterproof. They seal. So I have oats here from a local farmer. So I put a little bit in here for Stella, a lot more for cinnamon. And this one here is when I take the hobbles off of cinnamon to make sure she's busy with the oats after and don't kick me in the face. And so I'm just going to put the lid back on here. Okay, so that is my basic setup. I'm going to put my mitts back on because my hands are getting cold. Um, and then I have hay here. So we milk and then we feed Hey, so let's get these together and I am not going to talk for a moment. My daughter Ocean is just going to film. You're going to watch me set these two up. Um, it is better if I don't talk while I get her in the stanchion just because she gets a little weird. So what I'm going to do is take her daughter Stella, which we're training to be a future milk cow because I would like two milk cows. Um, I'm, I always tie her up so she's always used to being led. Um, if you hear a cat, that's just a cat that wants attention. Um, so we're going to tie her up. She's going to get oats. I'm going to bring cinnamon into the stanchion and she can be a little stubborn sometimes. She is also pregnant. Um, we bred her with a bull that's half Jersey so she'll be Dexter Jersey cross the calf praying for a heifer. So we'll bring her into the stanchion, we'll get her settled in, and then once she's settled in, I can talk again and go through how to milk, um, why we built the stanchion the way we do, it's preventative for, for kicking, um, and some like that, okay?
girl. Come on. Come on. Yeah, you gotta come here. Come on, Cinnamon. I told you guys she's a bit stubborn sometimes. But it's sunny right now and she doesn't want to get out there. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on. Got a girl. Come on. Yeah. In here. Come on. Good girl. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. Come on, Cinnamon. Come on. Come on. Come on. Over here. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Go. This way. Good girl. Yeah, I know. Come on. You gotta come to the mansion. Come on. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. Give some oats to Stella. Right here. And she loves her oats. That's her little treat. Okay, so this is set up here. So she's in the stanchion. Such a good girl. So what happens is, is I take these off. And I grab some hobbles. I like these hobbles because they're not as aggressive. She can still move a foot in each direction and a foot this way. So let's get them on her because no matter how nice your cow is, they can kick you. And let me tell you, I've had two fractured ribs with a kick. You do not want to have your cow kick you. So I put these on. Even at minus 50, these hobbles do not stiffen. Good girl, Cinnamon. The other safety we have is this board right here. I take it down, it slips in. And if you want to come over here, Ocean, take a look. This is her udder here. It's not as f that full, but she has a smaller udder for being a Dexter. I can milk. If she wants to kick, she'll hit the board. So she can never kick me, never spill. If she pees, I never have to worry about my bucket here. Okay? So this is an awesome safeguard where if she has her hobbles on, you can safely milk and never be kicked. And her tail doesn't hit me. This is just an awesome structure um, set up that my husband's done. This just slips in and out right here. Um, so great, great stanchion structure. Good girl, Cinnamon. So let's get to milking. You can take a look here a little closer. She's eating her oats here, happy and content. Okay, right, so this is my little stool. I put my box, I actually, because it's so cold, you guys, you can read books on, you gotta, gotta wipe their udder down, do this, do that, dip their udder in after to close up the, the where you're milking. You know what? If I take a bucket of hot water right now, at minus 10, and it's cool, my cheeks are probably turning red, I know oceans are filming this, her udder will freeze, it'll be worse. So in the winter, I don't wash her down. Get a close up, look how clean it is. She's not dirty at all. So what I do is I take my hand, I'm just gonna put this right here, and I just wipe her down to make sure there's loose hay or anything on her and this also stimulates her udder if you wipe her udder down or sorry if you just move her udder like a calf would move it around it stimulates it okay. and so she's just gonna go pee here and I'm just gonna let her go pee as you can see she's hitting the board but she can't pass this and no pee gets into my bucket okay so this is just a great setup so now let's get to milking. So how do we milk? So I'm, hey you guys, I'm gonna pause the video for a moment just so I can give this opportunity to chat a little bit more about um, 
washing the udder of your cows and the reason why I didn't during winter and I thought after um, going through and editing the video and making it YouTube friendly, I realized I didn't touch really, really um, good on this topic and I want to go a little bit more in depth. So I'm hanging this onto this video just so you can fully understand why I didn't wash her udder in the winter time because I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to come and go whoa isn't that unsanitary you got to wash her udder you're crazy and a whole bunch of other comments will come in so I want to explain myself here at first now we live in northern Alberta and this winter was exceptionally cold I saw um, five days of minus 50 straight through the warmest time during that that those five days was minus 35 so in the afternoon it was minus 35 at night it dropped all the way down to minus 50 and that's exceptionally cold think about that so let's say your milk cows outside you go outside at 5 30 in the morning like I do and you're getting her in with oats um, just like you saw but it's minus 50 Celsius outside, you can't wash her udder. I'm, I'm milking open. It's not like she's in a barn protected. That udder is like your skin. Um, a little thicker, of course, but, but it's a sensitive skin. So if I go to the house, if I, if I wake up in the morning, put hot water in a pail, get myself all dressed up, um, and walk the distance to the barn, that water's going to be cold. You take a rag, you put that on, on her udder, and you are freezing her up. And then she's prone to mastitis. She's prone to more sickness. It's cold. Um, then, then a whole bunch of other effects happen. So that is the reason why during the winter, I did not wash her udder. And it's for her own sake. Um, her udder was clean. I mean, it's it's got tons of hair. As long as you keep the bedding clean, you add new hay or straw to it. She's not lying in her own poo. She's clean underneath. And that's the why I kind of rubbed her belly off before I milked so that all the hay or straw or any debris falls before my milk bucket goes under her and that limits the amount of debris falling in my milk bucket plus there's no poo sticking to her she doesn't you know it, it's as clean as I can possibly make it under the circumstances that I am milking now if I had a heated barn or a barn that you know was half decent temperature I have no problem washing her udder but in my case with what I have it doesn't make any sense and I don't want to put her at risk um, of mastitis and then have to try to fight that um, with possibly even giving her drugs it's not in the in my cards she survived winter just fine she's a Dexter and that's the whole point I got Dexter a nice hairy udder a nice heavy coat she can withstand the weather and she keeps herself so clean so I just want to stress that because I have a feeling that I'm going to get bombarded with comments and I want you guys to understand first why I do what I do and so in the summertime it's a different story it's warm it's hot she lays in the dust in the pasture she's actually more muddy than she is in the winter and she rolls around and having fun and and sometimes we have rain for three or four days and her underneath gets all wet and muddy then I will go out every morning and as I milk her I wash her udder first and it's nice warm water with a clean rag wipe her all down make sure she's clean and then I I uh, milk her so in the summer yes I do in the winter even if it wasn't minus 50 if it was only minus 25 degrees Celsius I still wouldn't have washed her udder it just it makes her cold could you imagine taking your hands you're outside 
all day, all night. You're trying to fight the cold and somebody takes your hands, bare hands, puts them in water and then you take your hands out and you just let them air dry in the cold. You're going to freeze. Um, frostbite. You, you name it. So that's what was going through my head. And I didn't want to expose her to that. And the milk came up clean after we strained it. It was just a little straw, some dead skin that falls off the udder. It comes out really easy and it's been fine. So I just, that that's my clarification here to you all and to understand that I didn't get the chance to really explain that as I was going through um, explaining milking to her. So I hope that that, that helps. So enjoy the rest of the video. So how do we milk? Now I'm going to show you here, just with my hands, I got a very lovey-dovey cat here, um, is <laughs> you naturally take your hand and you close it in, okay Peanut, you got to come down. You naturally close it in this way. You close your hand like this when you think about it. But milking, you're closing like this. Okay, so the this part here goes in between your hands and you're actually pressing down. So you're you're sealing the milk in her in her um, teat and you're squeezing it down and you're squeezing it down. Okay, that's how you milk. So if you take my finger here, you're squeezing it down, you're squeezing it down, squeezing it down. So this is the action that you need to practice is you need to get it in here, squeeze 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 and you build a lot of muscle up okay I hope that that makes sense um, and then you get can get to milking here all right Peter are you gonna help me milk now you milk with bare hands I have no idea how people milk with gloves on and you can milk with a cat on you and I'm just gonna get close now this is how I milk with this stanchion I find it comfortable so I'm just going to work and just massage her here so she lets down. And then I start. And you can see right here I'm squeezing the top and milking. And so you just keep on going. So I'm going to milk her here. Something like that. So these two are done. I'm I'm almost in this one, but I want to show you guys a technique here. Is see how I squeeze it? It's almost done. And what I like to do is take my hands, kind of go back, and I'm massaging the milk down. And you see, she has a very hairy udder right here, and that's okay. We're gonna strain the milk. So if there's any hairs that fall, no big deal. You see that? It's kind of all done done and same with this one here I kind of massage it if there is milk still trapped that's how you strip an udder and I just kind of massage the rest of the milk out and I'm not pulling that hard on her this is the last one I need to do this one's never that full that happens there's always a side that's least so I'm just gonna milk and show you And all this hair, this is the reason why I picked a Dexter. 
is because they got lots of hair, they can handle the cold winter, and minus 50. So when I was milking minus 50, all this that I'm showing you is what I did only in extreme cold and extremely fast. Now I'm going to again massage this a bit, get the last little bit, that's some hair that I'm just going to pull um, out of the way, and it's all done. So when, it, when you got those dribbles, that's all done. Okay, and sometimes I go back because she still produces milk, and I just strip that a little better. We're all done. So we are all done here. So what I do is I grab my mitts, and a technique, you guys, when it was really cold, is before I sat down, I had my jacket. I lift up my jacket and I actually shove my mitts underneath because my body heat will keep me warm, keep them warm. So when I'm done milking, I grab my mitts, put them on, and I have roasty toasty mitts right away to warm up my hands. So I'm gonna put my gloves back on. I'm gonna hop up here, straighten my jacket out, grab my milk. Now I'm gonna grab my transfer now. If there's something that went in it, kind of just hit it, make sure it's clean. Remember, we are, I'm going to teach you how to strain this milk. Pour it in here. In the summer, I was getting a gallon to gallon and a half. Now it takes me about two milkings, sometimes three to get a gallon. We are coming off of winter. She is pregnant. I'm not too worried about it. But do you see all the stuff in there? Hair and stuff. I'll show you how to clean that up. So I put the lid on. Because sometimes Thunder likes to come and lick this one out over here, clean. So I'm just going to set that aside for a moment. Now remember I said that other bucket of oats? When I was training her to be a milk cow, when I bought her at four years old, I trained her to be a milk cow. She wasn't a milk cow. Getting these hobbles, you would have never wanted to do this without oats. Now I could take them out, but I'm going to show you why. So I give her a little treat again. Hey cinnamon girl. I'm just let Ocean come with the camera here. I'm gonna grab this bucket out. I usually give her a nice little nice little rub here. Hey cinnamon. And I let her nose go in. Give her the second bucket. I come over here and uh, come around the other side, Ocean. This side here. Very good. I grab the hobbles. Really easy to take off. off just like that I hang them up over here I take the board out and it just stands up now when it's really cold you want to keep this board up otherwise if she goes pee it actually will freeze solid so in summer you can push it back in in winter you want to keep it up so I use my um, little stool we let Stella off this is just the routine that we have here. Come here, Stella. Oh. Grab my rope. And now I'm going to let Cinnamon off. She's been such a good girl, she's going to come around and she knows there's hay. Good girl, Stella. Or Cinnamon. Good girl. And there she goes. I'm just going to gather up my milking stuff. There we have it. Okay, so let's go back to the house. Let's go back to the house and we will strain the milk. So we are now inside the house and we need to strain the milk. Now this is very, very important. So I'm going to go in the fridge 
because I have this morning's milk already in a gallon jar. So I'm going to add the evening milk to this jar. So what I'm going to do is I use a tea cloth and I just kind of press it down so it looks something like that. Then what I do is I take, remember the milk's in here that we just did and I pour it in. Just like that. And we try not to get any cats in. Okay, so now take a closer look of what I caught. So I caught the hair. There was um, a piece of, looks like a piece of hay that fell in there. Um, little bits of udder. I mean, it's it's some um, skin, so a little flex, flake, sorry, of it. So that's what I've caught, which is just perfect. So I'm just going to kind of gather that up. And I'm going to just now close this up and take a look. We've got another gallon of milk here for cheese. So if you take a look at the fridge here, now this is a working gallon that we're drinking. So I'm just going to put that off this side. So these two are the gallons that I have um, saved up for cheese. And you can actually see the cream separation here. So this one here, we're going to jump into making um, a homemade mesophilic culture. Well, this one here is going to set up with the cream separation for tomorrow. So these are my milk that I have for cheese making. And that is everything for, for how to milk a cow. The next step will be how to take that cream off, make it into butter, and then make it into a buttermilk. Um, separate the butter from the buttermilk, take that buttermilk and make it into a mesophilic culture. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about culture first, and then we're going to dive into the actual making of the culture. We'll see you on the next video.